Okay, y'all, here it is for part two. I'm gonna make this, stretch this one out to 20 minutes, okay? Part two. Landon opens up his eyes, and at first he's a little confused, and then he remembers what happened. Him and his cousins were walking in the woods. They dared him to knock on the door of this woman's house. He didn't do it, and when he turned around, he saw this woman and blacked out. So he feels like he's laying on some type of couch, and he slowly gets up, and there he sees the old woman sitting on, <coughs> on a sofa next to him. And she, that's when she spoke to him. She says, it looks like you took kind of a spell there, little man. And he just shook his head because he didn't know what to say. So in front of him, there was an end table and there was tea there. She said, you know, I went ahead and made some tea, some peppermint tea. Why don't you go ahead and have you a sip? Landon knew he wasn't supposed to take any, you know, candy or anything from strangers, but he didn't know what to do. So he picked up the little um, saucer and drank a little bit <clears throat> he started to cough some because it was a little strong and the old woman kind of laughed she's gonna take your time baby and that's when he took a little a little sip he also took the time to look around the house and the out the inside didn't look as bad as the outside the inside was you know antique looking furniture and then in the front of him he saw three mannequins with all of these beautiful dresses on elaborate dresses um and, and landon didn't wasn't sure you know but it looked like they were dresses from an older time so he took his time and then he set the, the saucer down. He said, thank you, I think I, I need to go. Uh, he starts to get up and the old woman said, well now hold on now, now you, I'm not sure if you hurt yourself. Now he said, no, no, I'm, I'm fine. She said, well hold on baby, let me make sure that you're okay. That's when Landing kind of broke away from the old woman. The living room, the door was right there. He went out the, um, their front door, jumped the stairs, child, and started running through the woods. But then he turned around. He wasn't sure where he was at because they had led the way so he starts running straight running straight and then he notices um lights up ahead and it looks like there were lights from the park so he starts running towards the directions of the lights and sure enough once he um exit the woods he's in the playground area of the apartment complex so he walks towards his aunt denise apartment and they're standing out in the front um doorway uh, just hanging out in the front or his cousins that's when Portia turned around she and said, I'm so sorry, Landon. I wanted to come back for you, but Red was too scary to go. He was too chicken. And Red just kind of looked down at his shoes. And so Landon said, it's okay. And so Portia said, so what did she say? Did she do something? Did she put a spell on you? <laughs> Red kind of rolled his eyes at that. He said, no, 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 no. She, he didn't do that. Um, she didn't really say anything. She wanted to wait and make sure I was okay, but um, she didn't say anything or anything. She gave me some tea. And that's when Portia looked at him some tea. He said, she, she said, you didn't drink it, did you? He said, yeah, I did. I didn't know what to do. So Portia's like, oh my God, yeah. You you been, you been had a hex. She, she put something on you and put something in that tea. And that's when Red said, no, she didn't. He said, are you okay? This is Red talking to Lane. He asked, he said, oh, you okay? He said, yeah, I'm okay. It's just, I wasn't sure what was going to happen. So I just ran to it until I saw the street lights. So... Um, they went inside their apartment complex and, you know, shortly after that, they went home. Now, Lynn didn't tell his mama what happened, but he was a little shooken up about that, okay? So, like I said, every other weekend, they go over to their cousin's house to hang out. They have, you know, food. They have cookouts. You know, just having a good time getting to know his, um, his cousins. So, about three weeks into it, um, Landon's mother comes into the bedroom and says, um, Landon, I have some news to share with you. And he's like, yeah, mama. So she said, um, looks like we're going to be staying in Alabama a little bit longer. He's like, what? I, why? And so, so she goes on to explain that, um, they're getting a divorce. Um, her and the stepfather are divorcing and she lets him know. She said, baby, none of this is your fault and none of it is um, little John John's fault. It's just sometimes people fall out of love and that's just what happens. And so Landon tried really hard to fight back tears. And so he said, but what about my friends? And so um, his mother explained that they will be going back home the following week to pack up and that's when he'll have the opportunity to say bye to his friends. So that's what they do. The following week, they go back to Ohio, Cincinnati, by the way. They go back to Cincinnati, and um, they pack up, or the movers pack up, and Landon gets his stuff so they could take back in the rental car. And he says bye to his little two or three friends that he had there in the town and in their city. Um, and they make, you know, Alabama their permanent home. 
So traveling back to Alabama, um, they ended up staying, you know, renting out that place that they originally were staying in. That was their place. She had no intentions of moving anywhere else. That was it. She just didn't want to tell the children then. Um, so when they go over to Aunt Denise's house, the following weekend, that's when Landon said, he said, well, it looks like we're going to be staying here. And that's when Red said, yeah, we already knew that. And Landon looked kind of confused. He said, what do you mean? He said, yeah, your mama told our mama like the first week y'all came here. And so Landon felt a little sad. He doesn't know why his mama wouldn't have told him that, you know, early on. But sometimes adults just, you know, hide stuff from kids because they don't want to hurt them. So... Now, it had been about two weeks since that little incident with the lady in the woods. But Portia is just feisty. She can't let nothing go, child. So then Portia was like, y'all want to see something scary? <laughs> <laughs> oh, y'all, I'm so, I'm so dramatic. Portia's like, do y'all want to see something scary? That's when Landon looked at her. He's like, I don't know. I, I don't know if I want to go back in that woods. She's like, well, we won't be going that direction where the old lady, lady lives at. There's another um, path I want to show y'all. So they finally all agree. Okay, we're going to go back into these woods and see what she's talking about. So Portia led the way because they, they didn't know where they were going. So they walk about, mm, about half a mile into the woods. And then they come into um, uh, an area where um, it's cleared, but there's trees and trees surrounding one area. And so um, Portia's looking through. So they can't see what she sees, right? And so finally she's like, do y'all see it? And so Red is trying to look around. He's like, oh, I don't see nothing, girl. And so Portia's like, no, you got to look harder. Do you see it? Do you see it, Landon? And that's when Landon saw it. There were headstones. And so Landon then says, is that a graveyard? And she smiles. Miss Chibi said, like, yeah, y'all want to go play hide and seek in the graveyard? Landon was like, um, <laughs> mm, mm -mm. <laughs> Portia was like, don't be chicken, Landon. We had to say, yeah, now, now it's who's the chicken. So they all agreed, poor, yeah, poor Landon, they all agreed to go into the, um, the graveyard and play hide and go seek. So um, Portia said, well, since Landon, Landon the scary, uh, scary one, Landon, you have to count first and we'll go hide and you come find us. So Landon finds an old oak tree to lean on and he starts counting to 10. And at the end, he says, ready or not, here I come. He finds Portia pretty easy because she was trying to hide behind a, um, what do you call y'all, a headstone, but her pink tennis shoe was sticking out, so they find her. So she whispered to him, okay, Landon, we can go find um, Red together. So they go, you know, searching for Red. They search everywhere, child. They really couldn't find him. Find him. And finally, Red shot it at, I mean, um, and finally, Portia shot it, shot it at Red. We can't find you. Go ahead and, and come out. That's when Red jumped out from behind an oak tree he had been hiding the same area where um Landon had started counting from so they make their way out of the graveyard and then that's when they heard a crack sounding like someone had stepped on a stick and that's when Landon said did y'all hear that Portia said yeah I did it came from over there and so they looked over then they heard another crack and then Red said we got to get out of here well there's somebody following us so I heard another crack. It was getting it was getting louder and louder and louder. And soon, they I mean they started walking away, but they could hear it. Mm -hmm. So and then suddenly they heard a voice behind them say, "You children should be playing in these woods this late." And I'm that's when Portia said, "Is that who y'all think it is?" And they turned around, and sure enough, it was the old woman with the long silver gray hair. Um, Portia said, "What did you say?" <laughs> Portia said, "What did you say?" She said, "You heard me, child. Y'all should be playing out here at night." Um, it's getting too dark. Y'all don't know what's in these woods. And so that's when Landon said, yes, ma'am. So Red said, so are you really that lady that lives in um, that old house? She said, yeah, that's that's me. I, I live in the old house. She said, so. And so then she also said, y'all really shouldn't be playing in the old graveyards like that. That's that's very dangerous. And so uh, Red, <laughs> Red then chimed in, Portia here, I always want to do some stuff that's bad that we shouldn't be doing. She always getting in trouble. Portia turned around and said, don't make you do nothing red so the old woman kind of smiled after that she said well it doesn't matter now at this point y'all go ahead and head home and don't be playing in these woods late at night so Portia and red all of them three of them shook their head and they went on home so and when they um exited out of the woods Portia turned around and said did y'all see that old woman red said we ain't blind yes we saw her and we saw just how crazy she is too um 
And Portia said, I don't think she's, I don't think, passion. You child, she's a Portia of passion. Um, and that's when she said, I don't think she's as crazy. She doesn't seem like she's crazy. Landon said, I don't think she's crazy either. She's just, you know, she's probably just lonely being stuck in that house all these years. So um, Landon asked, he said, how long has she been living in there? And they shook their head. They said, we don't know, longer than we've been alive. So they headed on home and, um, they headed on home, and of course, Landon um, and the parents, they went home too later on. So, one evening, Landon woke up to his, to you know, dishes and stuff going on, and he saw his mama was cleaning the kitchen, and she had been cooking all night. She had made macaroni and cheese, fried buttermilk chicken, uh, mashed potatoes, collard greens, child, I'm even everything I want to eat right now, um, sweet potato pie, everything. So, so Landon was excited. He was like, Mama, what you cook all this food for? And well, your grandma's coming over tonight. And so Landon was a little um, shocked and surprised. He rarely seen his grandmother. Um, she always sent him gifts on his birthday and Christmas, but he's only seen his grandmother um, once or twice. He knows that his mother, his own mother is not too close to her and he doesn't, he's not sure why. So his mama had been cooking and cleaning all night to prepare for her mother to come right. And sure enough, the grandmother comes and she has a beautiful summer dress on. Um, her makeup is done. Um, Landon thought it was a little too done, but he wasn't sure. And her hair was in these um, pretty, pretty loose curls. and. When she saw Landy, she's like, look at you, Landy, you've gotten all tall. Why don't you give your grandmother a hug? So he gives her a hug, and that's when he smelled, she smelled like flowers. So he figured that must have been her perfume. So they sit down to have dinner, and that's when the grandmother started critiquing the mom's food and basically, you know, making comments how if she would have listened to her, she wouldn't be going through a divorce. And Landon could tell that his mother was very frustrated. So when the grandmother was getting ready to leave, she turned around and said, um, you know what, Landon, you should come over one day and help me in my garden. Landon looked at his grandma. He said, you have a garden? She said, yes. I planted all these beautiful flowers and roses. And you should come over one day. And so that's when, um, you know, Landon's mom said, well, yeah, Landon and, Landon and Little John John can come over. But the grandma kind of looked at, you know, Little John John. She said, well, Little John John's a little too young. But Landon here, yeah, he can come over. Child favoritism. So sure enough. The next weekend, Landon, Landon went over to his grandmother's house and he helped her in a garden. She showed him all about gardening. Some stuff he didn't even care to know, but he listened just to be nice. And finally, about 15 or 20 minutes into it, he said, Grandma, um, I need to go to the bathroom. She said, that's okay, sugar. You go up the hallway, the first door, door on your left. So he goes to use the bathroom. As he comes out, he turns to this right and he sees what looks like an old library. So he goes in, because Landon loves to read books, right? He goes in, some of the books he'd never heard, heard before for none of them had pictures in it, so he really wasn't interested in it. On another wall, he saw a bunch of pictures, and it looked like old pictures of his grandma, of his mama, and Aunt Denise. Um, and there's some older pictures of grandmother when she was a child. Then he saw one picture of, with a woman he didn't recognize. Then he looked at her really closely and looked at her eyes, and he's like, no way. That's what he says to himself, no way. He's like, is that the... That's when Landon recognized the woman in the picture. It was the old woman who lives in the woods, in the, in the house in the woods. So and then he heard his grandmother behind, behind him. And she speaks up and she's like, oh, so I see you found all the pictures. And Landon turned around, still holding the picture of uh, the grandmother with the old woman in the woods. And he shook, she, he shook his head. He said, yeah, yeah. And so... Your grandmother is kind of narcissistic. Girl, kind of, she is. So the grandmother comes over and sort of starts going over all the pictures on the on display and everything, you know, everything that she's done. And so that's when Linda said, um, but grandma, this woman in the picture, that's when um, the grandmother said, oh, she said, oh yeah, that's my sister, Kitty. He said, Kitty? She said, oh yeah, Kitty. We nicknamed her Kitty because she loved cats. She probably would have married one. <laughs> so now Landon looked down at the picture I can see that they were both dressed really, really nice. Very, very graceful looking. Um, and so Landon said, but grandma, isn't this the lady that also lives out in those woods next to Aunt Denise? And um, the grandmother kind of looked down at him. He, and so she said, oh, so you seen her? He shook his head. He said, yeah, we went out there and we saw her like a couple of times now. And so that's when the grandmother said, said then, well, you just need to stay away from her. You know she's not right. She went crazy a couple of years ago. Y'all need to just stay out of those woods and stay away from Kitty because she's just not right in the head. 
So Landon just dropped the subject. He put the picture back and helped his grandmother with the um the um the garden, but he could not wait to get back to Undini's house to let Red and Passion know what he knew, right? So as soon as he saw him them the next weekend, he went up to them and said, You guys, y'all won't believe what I found out. And they said, What? So look, I was over at grandmother's house a couple of days ago and she had a picture of herself and the old woman in the woods. That's when Red said, nah uh <laughs> That's when Red said, nah uh Then he said, No, seriously, I saw it. And she told me that that was her sister. They call her Kitty. The Patrick said, Kitty? He said, Yeah, Kitty, because she, apparently she likes cat. More like killing cats. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, just horrible. These are kids, so. So, that was like, wow, I can't believe we're related to that crazy lady in the old wood. So, how did we get to that backstory? So, Landon decided he was gonna tell his mama what he knew because he doesn't like to keep secrets away from his mother. So, he mustered up enough strength a couple of days later and he said, mama, I have something to tell you. She's like, okay, baby, well, go ahead. So he said, you know how uh, me and the twins, we've been going out in the woods. She said, yes, I know. And I told y'all you should be going in those woods. And he said, yeah, everyone's been telling us. But look, we went in the woods. And the first time we went in the woods, we came across an old lady. Um, he, we came across a woman that lives in um, one of the houses. And apparently she's grandma's sister. His mother looked down. She said, I know. She said, and he's like, you knew? She said, yeah, I knew. He said, well, why does she live out there? Why don't she live in the house with grandma, that big house? I mean, she has enough room. And that's when the mother looked down. She's like, I think you're old enough to know some things. So that's when Landon's mother tells him this crazy story about 40 years ago. Y'all know I love, I love a good flashback, child. About 40 years ago, <coughs> Kitty and Francine. Francine is the grandma's name, right? So they, um, of course, they lived in this house, this big, beautiful house, the house, the same house that Francine lives in now. So um, Francine is the young, younger sister. Kitty is older than her by three years. And so Kitty was and still is a fashion designer. She would design all these beautiful dresses and Francine would um, model them. They started off locally, you know, um, Kitty would design and sew the dresses and then Francine would model them and people would love them. They even started selling to all types of people, even white people, which was very uncommon back in the 50s and 60s. So uh, they got an opportunity to finally go to Paris. Well, during that time, Kitty had met a young man and which was very uncommon for common because um, Francine being the, the prettier, I wouldn't even say prettier, she was a lot more confident than, than Kitty and confidence can get you a long way, right? So. Francine was the one always getting the boyfriends, but this time Kitty had found herself a, a boyfriend and eventually he had proposed to her. Well, they finally got this opportunity to actually go to Paris, France. And so Francine was like, I can't believe this Kitty. We can finally go to Paris, Paris of all, all places to show our dresses. And that's when Kitty told her, she said, look, Jeff, Jeff was her fiance. Jeff proposed marriage to me, Francine. And I don't think I can do this anymore. Well, Francine was upset. She's like, well, think about all the money we can make, all, you know, everything, all the opportunities you would be missing out. Do you want to be stuck here in Alabama? Kitty didn't see anything wrong with staying in Alabama. She's like, I'm, oh, I'm happy here. I'm happy I met someone. That's when Francine said, you know, that's your problem. That's your problem right there. So one evening, Francine called up Kitty's fiance, Jeff and basically lied and came up with this story that Kitty does not love you. She actually met another man and that's who she's really gonna marry. So Jeff was upset, he hung up and he decided to go find Kitty and talk to her. Now Jeff lived in another, <laughs> Jeff lived in another small town. So he jumped into his vehicle and raced down to their city to try to you know, talk to her and reason with her because he loved her. He wanted to keep her, hold on baby, hold on. He loved her and he wanted to keep her, right? But on the way there, it was raining and he accidentally um, flipped his car and it went into a, a ravine and he died. So that happened and of course, Kitty was devastated. The love of her life died. Francine started to feel guilty. She finally mustered up the strength to confront her sister two or three days at the event, after the incident and was like, you know what, Kitty, I have something to tell you. Um, so the night that Jeff had his accident, I called him up and told him that you had met someone else and you were gonna marry them instead. Kitty turned around and said, you did what? 
She said, look, I did it for us. You know, you were falling head in love with this man, knowing he would probably break your heart. That's when Kitty cut her off. She said, I can't believe you did this. All these years, everything we've been through, finally I'm happy. The one time I'm happy and you take this away from me, Kitty was done. They hadn't spoken. They stopped speaking at all. She moved out. She took all her stuff. She fell into a depression. She, you know, stopped talking to everyone and she moved into this, to this little quaint house out in the woods. At the time, it was a cute house. This was like 30, 40 years ago. She moved in this little tiny quiet house out in the woods because she was done with everyone. And she, that's how she became the crazy old cat lady in the woods, y'all. That's part two. <laughs>